Previously on Heroes of Might and Magic 2, we have valiantly fought the High Elves and were victorious. Gained one point of spell power and decided to acquire the treasure chest guarded by the mummies. Meanwhile, back at Korakstone, absolutely nothing of interest happens due to the lack of funds. Another turn ends. Month 1, week 3, day 2. In Korakstone, we still cannot afford the upgrade to the Ivory Tower. Neither much of anything else, but we can recruit two additional mages. Let's switch to Sarakin and get the treasure chest. 1000 points of XP and Pathfinding good luck. Let's go with Pathfinding, it's really useful on rough terrain. And let's proceed to attack the mummies. I could cast some spells right now, but I elect not to. Instead, I move my bows to the back. The royal mummy sliver into the middle of the map. The mages fire at them, but only manage to dispatch one. Meanwhile, the regular mummies shamble onwards. Here the rocks choose to attack the royal ones. Manage to take out one and get cursed. The undead army continues the onslaught. In a fit of bravery, the goblin conscripts lunge forward. Meanwhile, the remaining undead forces reach the center of the battlefield. A sudden lust for blood, the halflings swing the slingshots to the nearby attackers, managing to take out three of the mummies. The balls hesitantly maintain the defensive position. The royal mummies barrel onwards, reaching the mages, hitting them, cursing them. One of them gets dispatched in the territory attack, and the other one dies soon after. The battered rocks retreat to ensure the safety of the mages. Fourteen mummies still linger on the battlefield. The brave goblins suffer heavy losses, yet manage to take out a single mummy. The rage fills the green little hearts as well as determination to avenge their fallen comrades. Unfortunately, additional mummies gang up on them and fall more mummies. On a positive note, the suicidal attack ensures the safety of the rest of the army. Two more mummies down, nine more mummies to go. Eight mummies to go. This is harder than I anticipated. Oops. Oh, additional mummy down. Five to go. Whoops, one more falls. And that concludes the fight. 570 XP gained, one ball lost. And Samakin learns few artifacts from the Shrine of the Second Circle. Gaining much confidence after vanquishing the mummies, he decides to attack the skeletons as well as end the turn. Month 1, week 3, day 3. Let's go back to Corkstone and recruit additional troops. Let's say 5 more halflings and a single additional mage. I really don't want to wait any longer for a troop transfer, so let's send Kalendra to the northeast to meet with Sarakin sooner or later. Now it's time to cleanse the land of even more undead, this time the skeletons.
Yay! As an additional bonus, we managed to get rid of the goblins as well. Let's grab the gold and some more resources. And let's kiss the idol. Yay! Let's send Sarakin a bit closer to the center of the map. Let's go back to Korakstone. And use the gold we just found to recruit the last mage. We can also afford two rocks. Let's leave. And end the turn. Now let's move Calendra. And Sarakin to a common location. They're so close now. Let's survey the surrounding areas a bit. Go to Korak Stone and recruit the last three rocks. The only units left unrecruited are balls and golems, which is tough but acceptable. With nothing more that we can do, let's leave the city and the turn. And after acquiring the much coveted steel golems, at least four of them, let's go to Kalendra and transfer her army to Saraki at last. Three more mages, four more rocks. 10 more golems, all the balls go to Kalendra, and 26 more halflings. Done! Now let's send Kalendra back to the city. While Sarakin will reveal what lies further to the north. Ooh, a horde of peasants. Let's attack them. They run away. Let's mercilessly pursue them and slaughter them for XP. Three points for 63 people. Sounds fair. Let's check out the campfire. Oh, gold and sulfur. Let's go to the crystal mine. Out of movement points. Next turn. Let's visit the illustrious town of Korakstorm. Let's check the well. Unrecruited balls, unrecruited golems. Let's go to golems. And we can't build anything. Let's leave. Let's switch to Kandra and send her to Korakstorm. Let's switch to Sarakin. Conquer the crystal mine and engage the iron golems in battle. Let's not cast any spells yet and begin hammering at them from afar, as usual. The rocks move between the halflings and the mages to shield both of them from attacks. Meanwhile, the steel golems advance, we shoot them with the halflings. Our own steel golems move in front of the mages to tank the damage if necessary. The ordinary golems advance slowly. Mages fire. And let's cast a spell. Let's cast, let's say, Bloodlust. And the Hufflings. A single steel golem left. Since when do animated chunks of steel have morale? That's not fair. The mages target the closest iron golems. The rocks can now safely attack them. One left. A single steel golem is no threat at all, so let's target the seven unupgraded ones. And let's fight fire with fire. Splendid, three stacks left. Oh, I see the mages feel pretty good about themselves. In this situation, I think attacking the isolated target would be wiser than attacking the weaker one. Now the injured rock is still over half its HP, but I will take no chances. There we go. And that's it, the goddess have been defeated 1025 XP. Level up, mysticism or navigation? Yes, I actually forgot to visit the witch's hut. Let's take mysticism regardless. A campfire, golden wood. Another pile of gold, but let's go for the chest first. 1500 XP. Develop mysticism or ballistic ballistics. An advanced. Another chest, 1500 more XP. Another level up. Estates or luck? Well, if it's the estates, it gives me 100 pieces of gold per turn. And even more gold. 800 stray pieces of gold just for me to snatch. Let's go to, you guessed it, Korakstone and see if we can afford anything new with the money we just found.
Well, no, apparently not. Oh well. Let's leave and undeter. <gasps> An intruder! Who dares to encroach on our territory? It's Atlas and he's got a formidable force. A force that can all too easily crush Calendra's forces to smithereens. I have no choice but to send Sarakin south, hoping I can reach Crockston in time. Let us assimilate all the castle's defenders into Calendra's forces. The situation is dire, so I shall erect the most basic of fortifications. A boat. Leaving the castle is now not viable. Kalindra shall defend it to the very end. Let's end the turn. The enemy draws near as does the end of the month. It is now week four. Thraken needs two more days to reach his destination. Let's go to Corkstone and recruit as many troops as I can. I can't allow them to fall into the enemy's hands. Let's arrange them into the best formation I can think of and recruit more mages. What little gold remains I decide to spend on recruiting to rocks. I can now afford neither more troops, nor any buildings. Do Calendra's forces stand any chance against this army? Before I end the turn and find out, I should make sure she has learned all the spells from the mage guild that she could. Let's see how this will end. Stopped one step from my castle, well, that's less than impressive. Okay, let's recruit more troops. And by more troops, I mean exactly four more steel golems. Let's leave the city, switch to Sarakin, and crush the invaders' forces. For Roland. The battle commences. The disruption ray gets cast on the rocks. The wolves sprint forward. Before I move my mages, I peruse my spellbook and finally choose haste. And after a short period of indecision, I decide to cast it on the steel golems. The mages dispatch all 24 halflings. The golems attack the wolves. Manage to kill three. The goblins advance. The rocks decide to block the Elk Chieftains. One of them gets killed in retaliation, the Ogres swing at them, but deal no significant damage. The Halflings finish off the wolves, meanwhile the Elkish Chieftains take down another rock. The mages fire at the goblins, who suffer heavy losses. The golems charge to further decimate the red. One of them gets destroyed as a result. The magic arrow deals 10 damage, and the goblins manage to pick one rock off. The rocks move to attack the orcish chieftains from a different angle. Manage to only take down two. One of them falls. Another two fall. The halflings target the heavily armored orcs, dealing some damage. The mages put the remaining goblins out of the misery. All that stands now between me and victory is a single ogre and 14 orcish chieftains. My brave rocks fall dead on the battlefield. All of my troops concentrate fire on the orcs. There's only one left. The ogre falls. As does the orc. The battle is won, though not without casualties. Atlas's army fell, and I finally get the chance to reinforce Thraken's troops with some of the army left at Corkstorm. I'm sure Kalendra can help him with that. There she goes. Let's see, 7 more rocks, 10 more steel golems, 5 more mages, and 18 more halflings. I'll leave all the balls for Kalendra. Now, let's send the girl back into the city. Well, we still can't build or recruit anything. So, let's leave the city. End the turn. And let's send Sarakin west to battle the rangers in order to gain control of the Golden Horseshoe. But to see that, we'll have to see part 3. See you then.